the uh, project for global leadership in the 21st century. Uh, on 27, 28 October 2020, so in almost a year from now, at the Palais des Nations, uh, room 19, uh, a wonderful room that has just been renovated, uh, in the Star Dome styled room, uh, renovated with financing from Qatar, uh, we will have uh, our conference. Uh, the conference to present the findings, the recommendations, uh, and also to illustrate the way forward of the project itself, the Global Leadership 21st Century Project in partnership with the United Nations. So this is what I'm going to tell you more about, but I wanted to start with this because this is a date that we should all pencil in in our agendas, 27, 28 October 2020. Uh, this coincides almost, almost, because it's just a few days afterward, with the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. Uh, so uh, this also marks uh, the, uh, the, um, the this very important date for the United Nations. Uh, is an important anniversary, and we have been given the mandate, we have been given the role, uh, the institutional role, uh, to celebrate somehow uh, the uh, event, uh, and it's not the only event, of course, there will be many events in New York, uh, in particular, uh, a special representative of the United Nations Secretary General has been appointed for that particular purpose, but for Geneva, we will probably be the peak, uh, the most important event, especially on this <clears throat> Uh, subject, the only one. Uh, so we have a mandate, as I was saying, we have a venue and we have time frames, and we'll go through that in a minute. The um, project, uh, as I said, the, the contours are still being defined, but the uh, main partnership is established. The partnership that we had to work on for a long time uh, they didn't start yesterday, it started long ago. Um, as you do remember, the 2013 event on the challenges of the 21st century has been a milestone in that sense, uh, as it has been a milestone for sure. The, um, uh, the, the ECOSOC uh, consultative status, special consultative status that we do have and we do enjoy, as the Future of Capital Initiative, as the future of education initiatives, all the other initiatives, people-centered approaches, uh, issues that now are part of the mindset of the, uh, let's say, uh, direction that the United Nations is trying to take at a crucial time of its own reform. So uh, let's say we are really partnering, not just because the exchange of leisure took place, but because on the substance, we are working along and doing something that the United Nations by itself could not do. And, and we'll come to that. Uh, so uh, just to, uh, to say a word in terms of what the project is all about, we know that we will have a consultation research phase that has been starting, has been started already, as Gary was saying, he started uh, in Baku, uh, but now we have announced that formally. We have really announced it formally with an event on the 9th of November, so a week ago, uh, with a briefing, an executive briefing, actually two ex executive briefings, one to uh, member states and international organizations, and the other one to civil society organizations, the same day, morning and afternoon, um, at the United Nations. So this has been a formal launch, I would say, of the project itself, um, the official launch of the project. Uh, why did we do so? We did so for two reasons, primarily. To engage partners, to make people know that we do exist, that we are on the map, uh, and to learn from others. So these are the two objectives. Primarily, we wanted to make sure that people uh, uh, know that, that, that the project is ongoing and that we, as, as Gary said, uh, we need 
we need more people to follow. We need to engage more people in the process. Uh, in that sense, this was uh, uh, a breakthrough in many ways, also because it was a novelty for the United Nations to have a non-governmental organizations addressing member states and international organizations at an executive briefing in Geneva. It's a new modality, let's say. Normally, our member states or um, intergovernmental organizations that do this, we have been the novelty uh, in, in this practice. But uh, others will follow suit. In fact, next week, the World Economic Forum will have a similar briefing to the one that Gary uh, handled uh, a week ago. So I will not get into the, the details of this meeting, but just uh, stay with me. The, the most important thing is really to uh, announce the project. A press release uh, has been issued to that effect. Um, let me say that a bit, a bit maybe on in terms of the, uh, the engagement and the issues that we are going to, to cover, uh, the, um, the consultation uh, in one year, so we have one year ahead of us, uh, we'll be covering all fields of arts and science. Um, and, and the purpose will be really to concentrate on, the, on knowledge transformation for practical application. So this is how I would try concisely to describe the project. Knowledge transformation for practical application applied to the new paradigm that the World Academy developed some time ago. So the famous hexagon that you all know. Uh, so we have issues like peace and security and disarmament, governance, democracy and human rights, economy, finance and employment, science and technology, education, health and social welfare, energy, ecology and climate. So all these pieces of the puzzle will come together not to define what leadership is, but to define how uh, a new leadership can emerge, how we can articulate a new effective leadership in, the, in this century and to make use of it. So the strategic partnership. Uh, I, I did say strategic partnership uh, that started in 2013, as we said, uh, with all those milestones in particular. But I think we have to uh, I, I mentioned it was strategic for one purpose, because we have to ask ourselves why the United Nations entered into this partnership with us. Uh, it's not just by coincidence. It's obviously because of the good work that you have done, that the Academy has performed in so many years, because of its name, because of the network, as was said before, uh, because of the high expectations that there are on the academy to deliver, um, but also because we can do something that the United Nations cannot do. We can say to the world what we feel. We can, we can honestly be a broker in this process. We can honestly say uh, with our uh, research, with our findings, what uh, and what, what shape this new leadership should take. The United Nations cannot do that. Uh, the United Nations officials, but they feel that they are really in the middle of a quagmire. They are in a situation where they need to progress. The UN is constantly uh, uh, reforming, as you know, uh, and needs our help to uh, be revitalized, to, uh, uh, to regain the sense of mission that has been lost in the, in the last few years, in spite of the good efforts of many of the leaders of the organizations, many of the officials working at the United Nations. So we will accompany this process. Uh, this, in my views, is the reason why uh, the uh, uh, United Nations came forward and said, uh, please, let's partner together. Um, there were some hesitations, but now uh, the hesitations are gone. I mean, we know that we are on board. Uh, we know that we really have to effectively partner with them and come up with something that will be useful for all. Um, at the UN, at, at some point, perhaps we'll come up with a sort of, uh, of metamorphosis of some kind to adjust to the needs of the new multilateralism in the making. 
um, again, we, we, we don't know uh, what will be the new nature of the organization itself. But uh, this is why we, we are into this ambitious project. The difficult part begins now, after the, uh, uh, the two briefings, after the launching of the project, after having a nucleus of a project team. We do have a nucleus of a project team. Uh, I'm not mentioning who is on board, but we know it. We can come up later on with the discussions. We have to expand this project team. We have to expand the uh, partnerships. Um, and, and so the difficulty is, is yet to, be, to come. I mean, it's, becoming, it's, it's, it's coming up now. Um, the project itself, as I was saying, uh, has uh, a, 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 based on a multi-stakeholder consultation process with international organizations, with nation states, with educational institutions, with, uh, with scientific and, and the technological community, this is already ongoing, business and financial community, civil society organizations, youth groups, and media. Um, the project stages are uh, consultations with all stakeholders, uh, this summit of stakeholders at UN Geneva, 27, 28 October 2020, a report that will be issued with the findings, and, and then what? And then uh, uh, the real work will begin, because is the development of educational training materials, outreach content, and support SDGs implementation. This is uh, fundamental importance because we are operating under the framework of the SDGs. Uh, as you know, the SDGs are a wonderful achievement for humanity, for the member states, the international organizations that subscribe to it, but the application is slow. And again, the, our purpose is to help accelerating the implementation of the SDGs throughout our project. We will have also to, uh, as I said, identify, identify uh, more people to join us. Um, and, and we will have various uh, steps into the, uh, this process. We will have further roundtables and consultations. It uh, came out during the briefings we had uh, last week that the United Nations offers us uh, other opportunities to have briefings, to have events and meetings during this year, so it's not one single shot, it's not the event of the uh, 20th of October only, there are other opportunities in the middle. Uh, and, then, and then at the end, uh, Gary will obviously uh, explain that with his vision, but the idea is, since uh, we're not stopping there, uh, the point is to develop really a leadership alliance. Uh, to, uh, to renew the sense of mission of the international organizations that are involved in this process somehow, to contribute, to contribute, uh, and, and to make sure that the principles, the ideas, the experiences that will come out of our project have a concrete application. So, the, um, the project stages, I think I mentioned, um the the uh, the the our purpose will be to explore the concept of uh, leadership uh, as an applicable model uh, as a driver of change eh? uh, not uh, a moralistic approach not a conventional approach not didascalic not theoretical so really substance substantial um the purpose uh, in in a nutshell will be to confront the evolutionary existential challenges, ecological, political, sociological, uh, technological challenges that we are confronted with nowadays. Uh, we will have to accompany, as I, as I just said, accompany the SDGs implementation. And uh, I mean, I, I'm sorry if we are maybe too ambitious, but I think we can say to redefine uh, the multilateralism and, and, and uh, the, the sense of multilateralism, how multilateralism can be revitalized, as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, was said before also by uh, Ludmila. So, uh, it, it, I would describe this process as uh, an exploration, an exploration to recover, 
recover the sense of leadership. Uh, we will have to listen to a lot of people. We will have to flag and we will have to tell stories of those individuals, experiences that embody values and leadership principles. We will have to learn who is doing what. We will have to have, with the dry word, uh, a stakeholder analysis. Uh, and we have to see who can do what and how. Hmm? So it will not be a numerical survey. It will not be a statistical exercise. Uh, what this will be, will be an exercise to recount, to, uh, to uh, capture uh, uh, the, the, the testimonies, the, uh, to, 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 to have key informants around this process and to uh, have and to articulate, um, the, the, to have answers to the unanswered questions, the many unanswered questions that uh, we have already uh, prepared to some extent uh, that will be addressed to the testimonials, to the key informants, to those who will participate in the process. So this is a bit the methodology of the process itself. Uh, as you know, Mila will be uh, the uh, research coordinator. So she will have to, with our help, with our collective help, uh, she will have to um, also offer us a clear model to go up about it. But they say the first ideas that we have discussed that seems to uh, meet uh, <clears throat> consensus around the nucleus of our group is really uh, to um, not to conduct a questionnaire and, and have and have answers, but really to dig into it and to extrapolate the sense of leadership uh, uh, that that uh, we want to represent. So time is now. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity also to engage uh, people. Uh, it will be a time also to develop. Uh, an outreach and resource mobilization strategy, things that you are already discussing. I'm sorry, I'm not with you uh, at this very moment. Uh, but uh, uh, there are opportunities, and uh, here, without dropping names, but I think we can say that we are doing a lot already to contact member states, member states that can give us a hemp helping hand, that could partner with us. L let's say clearly, we have a stage, and it's a unique stage. Uh, we have a venue, and it's a unique venue. You, we have an opportunity that, that others do not have. So the question is, uh, do they want to partner with us? Do they realize that this is an opportunity that others cannot offer? So I think they should. They should. And this is part of our uh, role, really, to transmit the sense of this opportunity uh, and to quality organizations to quality corporations, to member states, to organizations that they really can, they can work with us. And they also have to offer their contributions in a variety of ways in order to partner with us. The, the reason why we are in this position, I, I explained. Now, this opportunity exists. If others want to join, they have concretely to make an effort. Uh, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that uh, we have some partners already on board. Uh, we have the Nizami Ganyavi, we have uh, uh, the, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find my name, the names. Uh, we have the National uh, University uh, that Ramos Prikopje represents, uh, that he was with us in, uh, in Geneva during the two briefings of the 9th of November. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, other organizations, uh, youth networks. Um, Gary will be more precise in going through that. Uh, and we have in the pipeline, we have member states that we have already contacted, like Kazakhstan, because uh, Kazakhstan uh, has uh, partnered with us in the previous experience, the 21st century challenge uh, experience. We might have the World Economic Forum uh, itself. I mean, this is a question mark, but uh, we are uh, we are going to to meet with them and have a discussion around this. Uh, we have organizations also on the arts side, the artistic side, like uh, the Art of the World organization that uh, 
a meeting with this afternoon. Uh, so every day, every day uh, has and presents an opportunity. This opportunity is in front of us. I think, as Gary said, we have to uh, grab the opportunity, and uh, and many have to help out to help us out uh, for this. Uh, the SDGs implementation is uh, a, a very complicated area. Uh, we are also invited to consultations with them at the United Nations. This, this will be next week. Uh, let's not forget the youth organizations, uh, youth networks that we need, to, uh, we need to bring on board, other international organizations. I can answer to your questions probably around the next steps, how we are moving. Uh, but again, uh, uh, let me say this is a collective, I reiterate, this is a collective exercise. Uh, the uh, project just taking off. Uh, we have a window of opportunity, a tremendous window of opportunity, uh, not a, 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 a great time, not much time ahead of us in order to come up with an event in this uh, great room for 800 people uh, at the Palais des Nations in October next year. Uh, but we hope that we will uh, attract the right individuals. Uh, and the right institutions. No, not necessarily the most glamorous names, even if we are also moving in that direction, uh, but it's not the vedette that will make the difference, it's the content that will make the difference. Thank you.